You ever start a project where you're building a tool or modifying an existing tool and you get it good enough to use the tool, but there are definitely some improvements to be made. And finally, you circle back and finish the project. Well, that's exactly what happened with my nine inch wood cutting bandsaw that I converted to be a metal cutting bandsaw. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this original project is the project that started it all. I have gained quite a reputation on YouTube for being the treadmill motor conversion guy. And it all started with my bandsaw. I was visiting with my brother and talking about how the bandsaw was set up for wood and so it was way, way too fast to cut metal. And I was telling him about how I had tried to gear it down to get it to a more manageable speed. And he suggested that I look into using a treadmill motor. At the time, I was good with electronics. I knew some things about electrical components and that kind of thing, but I had not ventured into the world of treadmill motor conversions. But I began doing research, began learning stuff, picked up a treadmill, started experimenting, picked up some different parts, and I was able to convert that bandsaw. This is my Porter Cable wood cutting bandsaw. Now you may be thinking, what's the difference between a wood cutting bandsaw and a metal cutting bandsaw? They make wood cutting blades, they make metal cutting blades. If you want a wood cutting bandsaw to be a metal cutting bandsaw, just put a metal blade on it. If only it was that simple. They make lots of metal cutting blades for this unit and installing the blade is a piece of cake. Getting it slowed down to a usable speed was a lot more complicated. If you're gonna use a treadmill motor to power a shop tool like this, the first thing you need is a variable power supply. And that's in this box right here. Under here, not a lot of modification going on there. This is the original wheel. Everything fits like it's supposed to. And then inside there is a custom pulley that I made on my lathe. And here we have the treadmill motor that I am using to drive this bandsaw. So I utilized the original power switch that came on the unit. We can turn it on. That's the slowest speed. We'll just turn the knob to get more speed. Now I've got a couple of videos. One of them is on treadmill power supply mistakes and one of them is on treadmill motor mistakes. Now some of those mistakes have come from you, the viewer, but some of those mistakes, they came from me. This build, I made several mistakes on. The first mistake that I made was I used the same power supply that everyone else was using on YouTube and other internet sources. And it was the cheaper SCR. Now I have yet to go back and fix that and that is something that I will do in the future, but it's not a great SCR. It pulses at the lower speeds. You can't get quite as slow a speed and it's frankly, it's just not as good as the unit that I have been subsequently recommending in all my videos. The second mistake that I made, and this was definitely a bigger one, was not gearing the motor down enough. I get this all the time where people are like, okay, because I can go variable speed, I don't need to worry about gearing. And in doing so, you leave a ton of torque on the table. This motor is rated at 4,500 RPM. The motor that I replaced was rated at 1,700 RPM. I did not want to run the bandsaw any faster than it was designed. So what I ended up doing was putting a limiting resistor on the potentiometer so that I could never turn this up faster than the max speed that it had with the AC motor. When I replaced the potentiometer, I added a resistor in series to the potentiometer and that makes it so that I can never go faster than the max speed that this had before. And while that's an effective way to do it, Gearing is so much better. You are far better off taking the max RPM on the motor, 
dividing it by the RPM that you are trying to get, and then using that as your gear ratio. So this is the gears that originally came on this bandsaw. This is the motor drive gear, and this plastic gear is what fits on the bandsaw wheel. When I upgraded to this motor, I made this pulley. It had less teeth on it, because I only needed a few to match this, and to match this corresponding belt. And I used it this way, well, for three or four years, and it's really been quite good. Now, if I push it a little too hard, the lack of torque does become apparent, and when you think about it, I mean, you are taking this small spinning circle and converting it to a slightly bigger circle, but then it's converting into a nine inch circle. And that's where you lose a ton of torque. After all these years, I decided it was time to finish this project and get it working better. The first thing I did is I machined a replacement pulley here. And that's that guy right there. Now, you would look at those two pulleys and think, oh, this has got to be three or four times bigger than this. You know, you geared that down a lot. Believe it or not, this is exactly double this. When I looked at the max RPM that this had, and I looked at the gear ratio, and I looked at everything that I was trying to do, going from this to double gets me pretty close to where I want to be. Also, it had to do with the size of the piece of aluminum that I had. Had I had a bigger piece of aluminum that was thick enough, I may have geared it down even further. So gearing it down from this pulley to this pulley, I have just a little over three and a half to one. And that is a significant improvement in torque. Now, this is the base plate. It bolts up right here. And it is what you'd use to tighten up your belt. Now, when I originally did the install, all I did was tightened it by hand. So the mounting plate that fits on the back of my bandsaw has four holes with four bolts sticking out and I tightened it down with nuts and then I just slid this to get the tightness that I wanted. And while that was an okay way to do it, I definitely did notice again in those high torque situations where the belt would slip a little bit. My solution was to use this threaded hole right here that came on this mounting bracket. This is designed to have a bolt thread into it and then fit up against a stop on the base plate and tighten it for you. Now, when I originally mocked this up, I put a piece of steel on the base plate so that the bolt could have a hard place to adjust against. And the problem that I had is because there's a little bit of slop in these slots, when I would tighten it, it would actually cock the mount a little bit. And the moment that you have this no longer parallel to this, your belt is going to try and walk. So it's super important that you put a guide on your base plate. This is now my modified base plate. Originally, it was just this piece of steel with four holes. Now we have the adjustment stop that screws in from the bottom, holds it in place. And then I also welded this push rod. It was the perfect length and it was a scrap push rod that I was not gonna reuse. And so now all this fits onto the top and you can slide in your adjuster and I have adjustment. One problem that I ran into when I drilled the mounting holes in the bandsaw, they were in a specific location due to the way the bandsaw was put together. So these holes in this base plate pretty much have to be where they are. But when I went from this pulley combination with this belt to this pulley combination with this belt. Now, if that looks familiar to you, this is a treadmill belt. So I didn't pay for this. This came on one of the mini treadmills that I scrapped. The moment I upgraded this to this slightly bigger belt, I did not have enough adjustment on this base plate. It was a simple fix. I took it over to the mill and used an end mill to open up these slots, and that has now given me plenty of adjustment. So let's take this over to the bandsaw. I will get it installed, and I will show you how everything looks all put together. The motor has been installed, but not adjusted. I could have shown you me installing this, but there really wasn't anything to it. The plate that I showed in the earlier shots bolts down to this piece of angle iron, which bolts to the body of the bandsaw. 
This is the adjuster screw that I was talking about that is used to tension the belt. And really, it's, it's all pretty simple. Now let's head around to the front side and I'll show you what we have going on with the pulley system and the blade wheel. So here we have the inside of the bandsaw. This is the pulley that I machined coming through this opening in the back of the body. Here we have the blade wheel. The other pulley that I machined to lower the gear ratio attaches by these three screws and it just sits there on the back. Now it is registered off of the bearing retainer inside the wheel so that I know that everything is spinning concentrically with this and with this. So let's go ahead and install this. I have the pulley, I have the belt. We're gonna fit the belt into the grooves of the pulley and get it sitting exactly where it's supposed to be. And we're gonna slide the belt over the drive pulley. All right, we are in place. Now we'll put the retaining clip on it. Make sure everything's roughly lined up where it needs to be. And we'll flip her around. What's nice about this is I don't even have to use an Allen wrench. I can just tighten it by hand, get it fairly close. Because of the push rod that's now acting as a guide, we are at a 90 degree angle. We are perpendicular to the belts and things inside the bandsaw. Get it to where it's snug. Rotate it back out, double check our tightness. Oh, that feels pretty good. Everything seems to be working as it's supposed to. If we flip it on, smooth as silk. That's my slowest speed. You can hear that little bit of a pulsing and that is the result of the cheap SCR. Once I replace that with a good one, we're probably gonna have a lower speed and that pulsing is gonna go away. And that's my max speed. Everything's super smooth, easy to adjust. Now all I gotta do is put a blade on it and start cutting. Blade is installed, everything's working as it should. It's the slowest speed. And it clips right along at top speed. I have a piece of 3 8 inch thick steel. Let's lop the end off, see how that goes. Just like that, we've cut it off. Managed to stick the blade in the process, but that shows why the SCR is such a good thing. Last time I stuck this blade, I had the MC20, fried the board. I don't think that I'd cut anything thicker than 3 8 in steel. I have cut as thick as inch and a half in aluminum. The best part is when I would try and cut something like this before, if I put hardly any pressure of the work into the blade, it would bog down. But now with the gear reduction being two to one, I didn't notice that to be an issue at all. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.